Scottish experts have found volcanoes in Antarctica, whose activity can be dangerous for the Earth's population. Thus, the largest of the discovered volcanoes exceeds the size of the Yellowstone crater. Scientists agree that the discovered volcanoes, if active, pose an even greater danger to the inhabitants of the Earth. It is worth noting that NASA experts have already suggested the presence of a supervolcano in Antarctica, but the real information has only now been obtained. Please like this video and subscribe to this new channel and you will see many more interesting and useful things. Erebus is an active volcano that rises almost 4 kilometers above the eternal ice of Antarctica on Ross Island, the southernmost and one of the most active volcanoes on the planet. Erebus is the tallest of the active volcanoes on Earth. Its height is 3,794 meters, where there are three more extinct volcanoes. By actively releasing energy, Erebus has created specific conditions around itself. In particular, the fire breathing mountain continuously heats seawater to very high temperatures exceeding 50 C. Unfortunately, it is absolutely impossible to swim in the hot water surrounding the Antarctic coast near the volcano. The fact is that the water heated by the Earth's heat does not mix with the cold sea water, which is why the coastal waters are naturally divided into layers. The lower layer consists of dense and, as a result, heavier cold water. On top of this, layer is a less dense, relatively light boiling water. Erebus was discovered by the expedition of James Ross, the nephew of the famous polar explorer John Ross. In the 1840s, J. Ross conducted searches for the South Magnetic Pole on the sailing ships Erebus and Terror. At the end of January 1841, Ross, as it seemed to him, found confirmation of his long-standing hypothesis. He believed that there was not a continent in the Southern Hemisphere, but a huge archipelago. When the ships approached the sea glaciers on January 27, the sailors noticed clouds of smoke over Erebus. The top of the second sleeping cone towered. Nearby, Ross named the volcanoes Erebus and Terror after his ships. Subsequently, the famous traveler R. Scott proved that the cones do not belong to Victoria Land, but are located on the island. Erebus Lava Lake is the rarest phenomenon in the world of volcanoes. Erebus is one of three volcanoes on Earth with unhealed lava lakes. The lake of fire among the eternal snow and ice makes, without a doubt, a stronger impression. Erebus volcano is characterized by constant activity. There are hardly a dozen volcanoes around the world that continue to be active between eruptions. Starting to erupt, the volcano emits volcanic bombs that reach a diameter of 6 meters or more. The slopes of Mount Erebus are heated by the hot breath of the Earth's interior and, in some places, it almost breaks out. The ice above such areas melts from below and forms caves, and warm moist air exits them through ice pipes. The steam coming out of them, when in contact with 30-40 degree frost, condenses, and the walls of these chimneys are constantly increasing. The height of such ice chimneys on the slopes of Erebus reaches 20 meters or more. Each volcano in Antarctica is interesting in its own way. Perhaps few people have thought about whether there are volcanoes in Antarctica, because this cold, frozen continent is associated only with ice and snow, and not with lava flows and volcanoes. However, scientists have found as many as 138 volcanoes on the western ice sheet alone. An interesting fact is that these 138 volcanoes are the largest volcanic region on Earth. 91 of them were first discovered as part of the study in 2017 alone. Only two volcanoes on the continent are officially considered active, Mount Erebus, which has been erupting continuously since 1972, and Deception Island, which last erupted in 1970. Scientists cannot accurately predict the eruptions of other volcanoes in Antarctica, but they monitor them with instruments, deploying networks of seismometers to detect seismic activity. For geologists, volcanic eruptions in this region are both easy and difficult, depending on the volcano. Although these objects, which are surface manifestations of heated material coming out of the bowels of the Earth, are considered young. As for volcanoes, scientists have not been able to distinguish whether they are active. Erebus, which towers over the McMurdo Research Base on Scott Island, has been continuously erupting since at least 1972, says Connor Bacon, a researcher at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory at Columbia University in New York. Erebus emits plumes of gas and steam, and even occasionally spews stone bombs, which are collectively known as strombolic eruptions. One of its most interesting features is a stable lava lake, which occupies one of the craters at the top where molten material is on the surface, 
Although scientists are constantly monitoring Antarctica's volcanoes with instruments, it is difficult to predict exactly when the next eruption may occur. In other words, apart from to active volcanoes and various fumaroles, scientists can practically not predict the activity of other volcanoes. But of course, any of them is still capable of erupting in the same way as these two, because the continent is not dead in the geological sense. The discovery of Antarctic volcanism was made, unknowingly, by the great English navigator of the 18th century, J. Cook. He observed a phenomenon in the polar waters that is directly related to the activity of Antarctic volcanoes. They were colossal blocks of black ice. When the exploration and development of the Southern Ocean began, the researchers again encountered black icebergs. It became obvious that Cook was not mistaken. There are several volcanic islands around Antarctica. The cones here emit a mass of ash and dust particles from their vents, clogging the atmosphere. Ash and dust settle on the surface of the ice blocks and turn them black. A gold mine has been discovered in Antarctica. The active volcano Erebus spews tiny gold particles into the air. The active volcano Erebus, located in Antarctica, presents an amazing surprise to the world. It spews tiny gold particles into the air. Towering at 3,794 meters above sea level, this giant is the highest point of active volcanism on the icy continent, being in close proximity to the South Pole. Recent studies have shown that gases saturated with microscopic grains of precious metal escape from the volcano's mouth. The gold dust formed as a result of this process is picked up by powerful Antarctic winds and carried over vast distances. Surprisingly, traces of this rare phenomenon have been recorded even at a distance of over a thousand kilometers from the volcano. In some cases, boulders of molten rock, which are best known as volcanic bombs, even fly out of the vent. In 1991, scientists studied the air around the volcano and were surprised to find that the gas streams contain tiny gold crystals no larger than 20 micrometers. Scientists estimate that every day Erebus throws 80 grams of gold into the sky. The authors of the scientific publication Eiffel Science estimated that this is equal to $6,000. The results of the study showed that gold dust spreads up to 1,000 kilometers from the volcano. Microscopic metal particles fly very far away from each other. Antarctica may be a rich source of many resources, but it is too extreme a place. Judging by the lack of news, none of the businessmen are interested in mining gold in Antarctica. This may be due to the fact that mining gold on such a distant and cold continent can cost more than the metal itself. Most likely, this is just an unprofitable idea, and such a business will only bring losses. Erebus is best known not for its golden vapors, but for the disaster associated with it. In November 1979, a DC-10 passenger jet crashed into the side of a volcano, killing all 257 passengers on the flight. The aviation company Air New Zealand paved the way through Ross Island because it wanted to offer customers an excursion over the cold continent. The flight started in Auckland, New Zealand. The plane flew over Antarctica and returned home. The weather was cloudy on the day of the crash, but the flight was still not cancelled. To at least see something, Captain Jim Collins tried to lower the plane to an altitude of 610 meters, but apparently did not see the volcano. Judging by the pictures taken by passengers some time before the collision, visibility was good but the pilot simply did not see the white slope against the background of the snow-white expanses of Antarctica. The airliner took off from Auckland Airport at 7.17 on November 28 and was scheduled to arrive at Christchurch Airport 11 hours later. This was to be followed by refueling and return to Auckland around 21 o'clock. There were 20 crew members and 237 passengers on board. The guide on the flight was 52-year-old Peter Mulgrew, sometime closer to 12.40. The airliner flew over Ross Island, Antarctica. The flight to Ross Island took place in visual meteorological conditions. After passing Ross Island, clouds appeared at an altitude of 4,800 meters. The commander decided to lower the aircraft in the area of a cloud gap to an altitude of 470 meters in order to proceed through the McMurdo Polar Station. In the process of descent, the liner deviated from its course to the east. Immediately after, the occupation of the height of 470 meters, the alarm of a dangerous approach to the ground went off. The commander gave the engine's takeoff mode and pulled the steering wheel towards himself, but it was too late. At 12.49 p.m., the plane crashed into the slope of Mount Erebus at an altitude of 447 meters. The impact was so strong that the airliner 
was literally smeared across the mountainside, and there was not even a fire. All 257 people on board were killed.